not even the fridge. Hi, Denise. Are we live? Yes. Thank you, Denise. We have Denise in the kitchen with Chef Filippo and I, and we are starting a wonderful Solari Live cooking class. Today, as I hope you know, because you should have your kits, lots of people got the kits this week, for carbonara. We're going to be making the famous Italian pasta dish carbonara, and I'm not going to tell you now, but wait till you see the really fun twist that Chef Filippo did with his carbonara. And carbonara is actually a dish that for many people is sacred, so he's probably going to be in a lot of trouble by doing this twist on carbonara. So watch it, enjoy it, but don't tell anybody because we still need to have him around here at Solari. So if you have your kit, make sure you have it all out. You should have all of the instructions, everything you should have ready. You should have water boiling. Um, Chef Filippo is going to start off by going through everything in the kit one by one. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the kits, here's the short story. These Solari Live cooking classes are free, obviously. But if you want to follow along with Chef Filippo, you can get one of these great kits that has everything you need for $39. So for $39, not only do you have everything you need to follow along with the chef, learn how to make a great authentic Italian dish, but when you're done, you have this dish for four persons, $10 a person. It's an incredible thing to do. Our class next week is going to be tiramisu. So sometime this week, stop by, get the kit for tiramisu. We'll be ready to rock and roll. As you know, here at Solari, we love cooking with wine. So with this dish, the carbonara pasta, partly because of the pork, we're actually gonna have a beautiful prosecco from the region of Veneto from the subregion of Valdo Biadene. The best Prosecco you can get. I'm gonna open this guy up and pour some for Filippo and I as we cook. But without any further ado, um, let me go ahead and um, pass this off to Chef Filippo. Are you ready? I am. Yeah. Why don't you let everybody know a little bit about the class, talk about Carbonara briefly while I open this up, yep. and then we'll go through the kit. As Randy was saying, Carbonara is a very sacred dish for many. I love to make Carbonara but I'm not that pure. And this time we're gonna do it with asparagus. That's the twist and it's gonna be surprisingly good. Uh, the Chef. The kit is here. So we have one pound of asparagus. Let's check together. Eight eggs. You have a mixture of uh, pepper. We put long pepper, Sichuan pepper and black pepper. You have some rock salt. Then we have, of course, our guanciale. Beautiful. And the guanciale, in case you don't know, is the jowls or the cheeks of a delicious pork or boar, then a wild we, boar from Italy. We have the spaghetti. Traditionally, we do carbonara with spaghetti. And we have two kinds of cheese. Okay, I think we're back. I don't know what happened there, everybody. I think we went on pause, but we're back. So, Filippo, maybe talk a little bit about the uh, final items in the, uh, the kit again, if you would. Yes, uh, we were at the spaghetti, I suppose, when it pulls. Spaghetti is the traditional pasta we do carbonara with. Then two kinds of cheese, the parmigiano and the pecorino. It doesn't really matter which because we're going to mix and use them all. So... Let's get started turning on the fire under your pot and have the water boiling. Awesome. And we have a lot of work to do, so few ingredients, but we have to make it right. So, eggs is, a, is our sauce today. Let's talk about an egg. Uh, we, first thing, we buy uh, our egg in Ramona uh, from a farm that raised the chicken on plein air. So it is all, you can see, there is no one like the other. And the very important thing when you use an egg, especially for a sauce like carbonara, is the egg to be fresh so if you don't buy from a, 
reliable source or you pick yourself there is a way to actually see if it's fresh just submerge in water and you see it's going down what happens when the egg stays for a while so it, it become old it lose moisture so it, if it's not fresh it floats that's a nice trick you can check if your egg are fresh and if it's if you see it floating you would recommend just throw it away uh, no I I never recommend to throw it away oh, okay but for dish where you eat like mascarpone cheese and okay. cream that we're gonna do next week or if you do a sauce where you don't cook the egg yeah it's very important that it's very fresh okay and that's one of these cases so just double check on the egg we did for you don't worry uh, you have uh, the kit you have the same quality uh, that we have i think the right pronunciation is heaven hauser oh heaven hauser is the name hauser. of the ranch in escondido yep yep and and these are uh, free range uh chickens meaning they have about we've actually been there they have about 12 acres of land and they actually let the chickens run around so they're not in cages um, in the beautiful Escondido sun. Okay, let's start. And oh, and if anybody wants any of these eggs, you know, if you live in the Point Loma, downtown, Mission Hills kind of area, um, we're happy to get them for you. Oh, my good friend Greg from Cincinnati is joining. How you doing, Greg? Let's start with the guanciale. We have to clean it up. This is my favorite part. I don't know if you've seen us do this, these uh, one trolley with you before, but when he starts getting these guys crispy, so number one, this entire kitchen just smells amazing. And number two, I always sneak a few and eat them. They're really great. So you see, that's a very good quality. And we got this from Sonio Toscano. Terry Di Siena is the producer. Similar to the eggs, if you live in the area, it's not a hassle to come by and you give us a little notice, yes. we can get you this really high quality one chala. You see that is very pink and no yellow at all. That's what we're looking for. Pink, no yellow. No yellow. We yellow, can. bad. Pink, good. <laughs> we can make a soup with all this crap. Yep, we season usually the bean soup. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a great. The one thing Chef does is he always has a little pan ready and he, um, not everything, but everything he believes he can use in stock or other items we keep. There's no reason uh -huh. to throw this away. I mean, there's so much great flavor in the um, kind of the fat that That's he's trimming off. It's a great source of fat and we save on butter or olive oil mm -hmm. now we have someone that says that they make their carbonara with pancetta yeah pancetta is not exactly what is <laughs> funny thing carbonara born with uh is born with should i say it bacon yeah because is a recent dish I mean, recent as uh, Italian, like the 1940s, right? Yes, Something during the, like the uh, basically after the Second World War, so it's like the 50s. Uh, the the American army is involved because they had this uh, bacon on their uh, daily, oh, like their ration. Yes, yep. the the K ration, and that's. Don't tell the Romans, because they really tight, including my wife, to the guanciale. But that seems a story to be true, that the first was with bacon. And just so you know, Filippo, your amazing wife, Valeria, is on, listening. Oh. And I don't know if she wants me to tell the whole world, but I think she has a birthday tomorrow. Yep here if you have a kid you should follow me i hope you you catch the the thing that you have to put on boiling your water and i didn't told you the water is gonna have uh, i gave you a i think 
35 to 50 gram of salt which is enough for seven liter of water nice we're gonna put less salt than usual because pecorino and parmigiano are both salty the guanciale itself is very flavorful so we don't want to overpower the pasta with salt so yeah believe it or not we don't use that much salt here um probably more than you use at home but a lot less than a normal restaurant um and also um our good friend kara asked how's your puppy kobe doing <laughs> he's great Filippo literally has I need to post it on Facebook and Instagram so you know what I'm talking about. He literally has the cutest um, little puppy in the world. Um, nothing but pure white fur and a great smile. What's the, I always forget, what's the breed name? He's a Maltese. A Maltese. So really great. He had a lot of asparagus. Uh, this is where the sacrilege comes in. Yes. I teach a trick to see even if the asparagus are fresh. So. First thing, don't cut the asparagus with the knife and you see that those are firm and stand and it crack when they want to crack. Don't throw away this because we're going to use on the water or in a stock if you're going to... The, the same soup we were talking about, we can use both and with other few ingredients, we're done. I gave you a pound on the kit. You might don't need the whole pound. Save the other for other preparation. Let's say that we use half of the asparagus you have on your kit. But this way, the asparagus knows where you want to break. Yep. If you cut, sometimes you have this hard white part, which is really chewy. Good for other use, but not for well, so this is a stuff. great technique to remember. Really good, high quality asparagus. But before we go too much farther, don't you need to warn everybody at the risk they're taking of including asparagus and in carbonara? Yeah, I just don't like what is Valaria thinking right now? <laughs> no, she's she's fine. Okay, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. As far as we use guanciale, because as I say, that's a very the thing. All the Italian are very strict about it. So for you with the kid at home, sorry to interrupt, you should have had your one trolley chopped up. It's important you get your one trolley going on the frying pan. So this is the part that I like the best besides Hello. eating it, is um, smelling and stealing little pieces of these one trolley. They're about to be very crispy. We have still a lot of work to do. So we oh. want to I'm going to say hi to our friends at Antica Trattoria, Trattoria in the, um, here in San Diego. You should check them out, an amazing Italian restaurant just a little bit east of here, Antica Trattoria. So, grate your Parmesan uh, and the Pecorino cheese with a grater by hand and make it no do not make too much pressure if you can come closer probably you see how fluffy we want it so it is melt, fluffy it melt on the egg instantly let's have everything grated so start with a good amount of it on the on the guanciale you can do one thing at a time if you want if you don't feel too much in control but basically all the italian recipe the funny thing is the time you prepare the ingredient and the cooking time for the pasta is almost the same so let's drop our spaghetti that's what you want to do to have a spread evenly in the pan beautiful doing a little twist and you'll see it is just naturally spread around in your cooking kit, we also gave you the right ratio of salt to water, which is what? It's seven grams per... It's seven gram per, per liter. Seven which grams is kind per of liter. a quarter. Yep. I was wondering when you're going to have some of the Prosecco. 
Ooh, again. That's the part now I like. We can go a little bit off eating. Yeah, again, for those of you with kits, and a lot of you do have them, your uh, kitchen is about to smell really good. Now, just so you know, everybody, um, my girlfriend, Connie, is actually allergic to pork. It's a, it is a thing. It's rare, but it's a thing. So we substitute the um, wanchale with uh, beef bacon. So you can, it's not easy to find, but you can get good beef bacon. And um, it's a delicious substitute if you don't want to do pork. Actually, we did in the house for a while. Yeah, we were, yeah, for a while we were making our own beef bacon. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Tommy and, and yeah. Brian were <laughs> dealing with it almost every day. They were. So you see a whole bunch of really fluffy, fluffy, fluffy cheese. If you look at them and zoom in a little bit. Really, really great. Okay, check on your guanciale. Sleep it constantly. Our good friend Josh from Infamous Food and Drink is joining. Hey, Josh. I know you're probably running around. He's like a uh, social butterfly, keeping the hospitality industry going. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. If you don't follow him on Instagram, go to Infamous Food and Drink. If you're looking at the comments going by, he's the one that just said ciao. There you go. Almost there. See, we wanted this golden color on the guanciale. I'm just, yeah, I know I've said it three times already, but for the fourth <coughs> time, I'm just saying that smells really, really good. As you notice, we didn't put any olive oil or butter, no other grease than the guanciale itself that is melting. And look how much yeah just for being honest, that's a good thing yeah that's a very good fat hey karen thanks for joining and be careful because it's very hot so yeah. don't flip too much the the pot so here we are ready stop at this point stop eating the guanciale and take it out if you have a ceramic bowl, that's where you want to put the guanciale aside till we finish with the pasta. Now we are a ceramic chef. Uh, that's you asked me last time as <laughs> as well. I, I thought by now you know. I don't know the reason. It's just the way we always did. <laughs> Many things in the kitchen are not that. Actually, I should have. A, re a scientific reason. I know. You said last time you were in a chat. I'm gonna have to remind you. My mother-in-law told me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This I is um, for those of you at home. You may not be at this exact stage, but get there soon because they're. Um, so the really good. the thing is, right now, turn off the pasta water. We are about three minutes. Turn it off, and let let the pasta. Do its thing. Yes, because that's a weird way to cook pasta. We don't, I, I usually don't boil the whole 10 minutes that the pack says the pasta, but we go three minutes and now the rest of the seven minutes you doubled. So we have 14 minutes. It give us, doesn't stress the chef, it doesn't stress the pasta, this method. Oh, perfect, <laughs> yep. The gluten has more time to release and relax, and you're gonna see the difference. Cooking. So, so one, you know, chefs shared a lot of tips on um, checking the quality of fresh eggs, how to do the asparagus. Um, a lot of people, especially here in America, we tend to think Italian food, pasta, you gotta drink red wine. And you've probably seen on this class, a lot of times we, we surprise people by our wine recommendations. And for this carbonara, because of the wanchale, because of the pork and it's a little bit on the greasy side, having a um, some bubbles like the Prosecco is a good choice, really cuts through that fat. You'll be surprised, even if you're not a big fan of Prosecco, if you drink a glass, like really drink a glass along with your carbonara, you're going to realize that the carbonara is better with the Prosecco 
Prosecco is better with the Carbonara. And um, without digressing, it's true also, a lot of people refuse to drink Lambrusco, and I agree there's a lot of cheap Lambruscos out there, but there's a lot of really good ones, and Lambrusco is on the upper Vesson side, or Frizzante in Italian, and goes great with prosciutto or any pork dish. So give it a shot, give us a call, we can help you get great Lambruscos, or if you want to have the exact same um, Prosecco that we're having here today, we have it as well. Nice, high quality one. We sell it all our market, right? We do. Yeah, come to the Solari Wine Market. We're open seven days a week. We open today at noon. Uh, I'll be here, personally happy to show you what we have. Head home with a nice bottle of Prosecco. Get some uh, Carbonara to go, or join us on our patios, or in the lawn. I mean, it's a gorgeous day. Nice. Sorry, I keep going. Uh, we're breaking the eggs now. Yep. We don't need the egg white that we use for our meringue here at Solare. You can do a nice uh, frittata or omelette with only egg white. Save it, but we don't use for the carbonara. We will use only our yolk. So separate them. That's Denise is gonna take care and make our amazing marine. Perfect. Okay. Now we use the fat that we have from from the guanciale to cook the asparagus. So I hope you didn't throw it away. I forgot to tell you, save it. <laughs> I think you said to save it. Yeah, I did. I think so. There you go. Our good friend Chris joined. Hi, Chris. Come by later, we'll have some Fortaleza. Oops. We're going to have carbonara soon. Here we are. Now, take a whisk and start denaturating the, the egg. So let's give a, a stir. What we're doing here is break the egg, the chain of the egg, in a way that mechanically we denaturate. And we allow the egg to get some air, some air in it and we mix all this cheese that is now you're gonna think that we're doing something wrong but we don't our compound is becoming very hard and here is when you think oh my god i screwed up but we didn't don't give up, sorry for this noise. And keep stirring it. It's a lot of work. Yep. And now, oops. We set it there. If anybody wants any of these, like the bowl he's using is a really lightweight metal bowl. Um, they're really inexpensive. We can get you a set of three for like $15 kind of a small, medium, and large. If you want one, let us know. Um, we get it at our restaurant supply, so we can pick you up a set of three. They're really great because they're indestructible, they're light, they're easy to clean, easy to store. So, I love to leave the tip of the asparagus. Hey, Filippo, our good friend, Chef Jan is joined. Hi. If you guys are looking at the comments going by, you should also follow Chefy Jan. She's always posting really great stuff. Hope to see you again soon, Chef. So let's cook our asparagus. In the, what, what that was the grease from the pan, from the uh, guanciale, From the right? guanciale, yes. And again, no salt. No needed. 
we want this asparagus be buttery almost I just add a little bit of pepper here and in our egg don't of course we we gave you a lot of mixture you can use you can see you put in just a little bit yes as much as you want as much as you really like and your rabbit <laughs> hey Filippo we talked about it this morning our good friends at Maestoso says let Filippo out of that mask well hopefully we will soon I'm getting vaccine next week yeah we're now able to get vaccines and the world's getting better so I don't know maybe for another month we'll be masked up for everything or maybe longer I don't know but it'll be soon Ah, what asparagus are tenderized in the brother in the <laughs> tallo, right? That's yep. the right pronunciation. And you see that our egg is becoming liquid again. That's true. And it you is. you keep stirring it. Don't give up. Keep stirring. We're gonna have a very smooth cream. Now, just so everybody knows, we're getting close to having yeah. our carbonara pasta ready so we are very close if you are in your kitchen making with the kit which i know a lot of you are now we're going to now is the time if you haven't already get a bottle of wine going maybe go. we're going to have a nice salad with this have a dessert very low fire now he always says very low fire but at least in my kitchen in my house that's a pretty big fire but and it still seems to be really sizzling so pasta for me is ready yep And what we do? Ah, this is one of the secrets of the carbonara. You don't wait till later, you do it now. Mm. And just to make everybody jealous, it's going to be Filippo and I enjoying this exact quantity. See? Now turn off your asparagus. Get our Gently cook. And that's the point where we use a little bit of pasta water to get everything together. Should be like this running. Yeah, that is perfect. So everybody at home, that's what you're looking for. If you didn't get achieve that this time, keep practicing. If you're watching this, going, hey, I want to have a kit. You can do this all weekend. Come by any time and get a kit. We put this. This will be on Instagram, so you can uh, watch it at any time. And I also put it on YouTube if that's easier for you. There goes my little crispy one chales. I ate about five of them over the last 10 minutes. Before. Yeah, I was saying, we're more than I that. Know. I'm not just, I told everybody I was going to. So we're almost there, we're almost let's there. Let's plate one, so we can dismiss. Again, if you're a carbonara purist, you're scoffing at the use of the asparagus, but it's really, really good. Uh, you actually had many purists. When we did the carbonara di norcia with truffle, yeah. we kind of converted many of those. Yep. <laughs> so the carbonara is a religion for many Italians. I've been to Italy more times than I could count, and I've been witnessed big arguments on how carbonara is made. Now we sprinkle sorry some crunchy on top and you might notice that I save a very small piece of cheese to have a rainy effect on the pasta that's 
about it. Wow. That is epically, deliciously amazing. Smells great. Look at that. I almost want to take a photo. I'm telling you, it, assuming you like guanciale and pasta and asparagus and cheese, you want to eat that with a great bottle of Valdo Biadene Prosecco. Filippo, you're amazing. Our cooking class next week, as I'd mentioned, is going to be making homemade tiramisu. A little bit more pepper because it's mine. And buon appetito. See you Chef, next Saturday. This is awesome. Hey, everybody, we're going to let you go. Again, those of you with kits that have been making it, you're probably really ready to eat right now. Come visit us. Um, we're going to be here all afternoon. Come to the wine market. We're going to go have some uh, carbonara pasta, chef. And then we got to get ready for a long day. Okay. Hey, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Ciao. And uh, we really appreciate your uh, joining us. Talk with you soon. Ciao.